The world of astronomy has changed. It will never be the same again. Have you ever had the opportunity to stare at the night sky when it's full of stars? Have you peeked at one of the planets in our solar system? Even with a small telescope, you can still see Jupiter and its moons, or the rings of Saturn, in the same way that Galileo saw them in the 1600s. Telescopes have become larger and better over time. Think of the telescope used at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, or the Palomar Observatory in California, or the large array in the Atacama Desert in Chile. With each new telescope, we are able to see the stars and galaxies in a new way. But now the world of astronomy has changed and it will never be the same again. Why is this? Well, join me in this video to find out. Telescopes on Earth have limitations. One of the problems is the distortion caused by the Earth's atmosphere. We get refraction, diffusion, glare, just think about how the sun looks red during sunsets or sunrises. On top of that, we are limited by the position of the Earth, the time of day, the clouds, the weather, even the moon, which makes it harder to see the rest of the night sky. Things changed dramatically in the 1990s with the launch of the Hubble Space Telescope. It was named after an American astronomer who set the foundations to understand the expansion of the universe. The Hubble was different to any other telescope that came before because it was placed in orbit, out in space. This improvement helped avoid all the problems of telescopes here on Earth. And indeed, we started receiving amazing images from the universe. But now astronomy has changed again. A brand new telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope, has just been commissioned and it started sending photographs back to Earth. What's so special about it? And how will it change astronomy? There are basically two things. First, we will be able to study the formation of stars and planets in more detail than ever before. At the same time, we will be able to see far away, deep into the past, to a time when the universe was very young. The James Webb Telescope was built jointly by NASA, the European Space Agency, ESA, and the Canadian Space Agency, CSA. It is named after James E. Webb, who was NASA's administrator in the 1960s. It took years to build and cost billions of dollars, but finally, it was launched on Christmas Day 2021. There are many technical details, but here are a few to consider. First, the distance. The James Webb Telescope is located at a distance of 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. This is almost five times farther than the Moon. For comparison, the distance of the Hubble is only 570 kilometers from Earth. Second, its position. The James Webb is located in a place called Lagrange II, which is a gravitational well where the gravities of the Sun and the Earth sort of cancel each other so the telescope can stay in position as it travels with the Earth around the Sun. And it can align in such a way that it can block the light from both objects. Third, size. The James Webb Telescope is much larger than the Hubble. The diameter of the Hubble's mirror is 2.4 meters. By comparison, the diameter of the James Webb primary mirror is 6.5 meters. According to NASA, this means the collection area of the James Webb is over six times larger than the Hubble. To compare the sizes, Imagine that the Hubble is about the size of a school bus, while the James Webb, with its shield unfolded, is about the size of a tennis court. Now imagine all the work that had to be done. It took seven months to send it into position and unfold it carefully so that it could be ready to use. Fourth, the instruments. The James Webb has four finely calibrated detectors that will mostly study frequencies in the infrared wavelengths. These wavelengths are larger than those of visible light. Small technical bracket. If you remember, the electromagnetic spectrum starts with the shortest wavelengths, or higher energy gamma rays. As wavelengths increase, we get X-rays, ultraviolet, then visible light with the colors of the rainbow, from the violet and blue to the red. At longer wavelengths beyond visible light, we get infrared, then microwave, and finally radio waves. So back to the telescope. The James Webb has instruments that are specially designed to analyze infrared light. There are two main reasons why this is important. One is to see through the veil. The other is to look into the past. Let's talk about the veil first. When stars and planets form, they are usually covered in clouds of dust and gas. But these clouds typically absorb visible light. It's like a cocoon, where we cannot see what's inside. However, these stars and planets also emit infrared light, which penetrates through the dust. With the right instruments, we can detect it, effectively lifting the veil and revealing the stars and planets forming inside. Just look at this example from the NASA website. The image on the left was captured by the Hubble on the visible light spectrum. We can see some stars in the cloud of dust and some galaxies in the background. 
However, when we see the same image in the infrared, it is possible to see many more stars hiding inside the cloud. But we can also see more galaxies in the background. This leads to the second reason why the infrared instruments are so important, because they will allow us to see into the past. Let me explain. We know the universe is expanding. The space between objects is stretching, and the light traveling through that space is also stretching. Einstein helped us understand this in his general theory of relativity. As the light stretches, its wavelength becomes larger, and it moves into the red part of the visible light spectrum, or it falls out of it completely and into the infrared. This phenomenon is well known. It's called redshift. In other words, because of all that stretching, objects that are very far away are either extremely dim or they simply become invisible to us. But if we capture their infrared light, then we'll be able to see them. Let me repeat that. We will be able to see galaxies we couldn't see before. But there's more. Remember, the farther the galaxies, the older they are. If we find objects that are extremely far away, we will, in effect, be able to see the first stars and galaxies that formed when our universe was very young, more than 12 billion years ago. By the way, these will not be the first infrared images we will receive. Even though the Hubble can mostly see in the range of visible light and ultraviolet, it can also peer a little bit into the infrared. Both photos in the image I showed you come from the Hubble. But the James Webb will be much larger, and it will be able to see broader ranges of infrared. And there's more. Another instrument in the telescope will be used to study nearby stars, and the planets that orbit around them. You probably know that astronomers have found thousands of these exoplanets already. The new telescope will study them in more detail, and will surely find many more. By the way, the James Webb Space Telescope will not replace the Hubble. We can think of it more like its successor. In summary, thanks to the James Webb, we will be able to see how stars form behind their clouds of dust. We'll see how galaxies looked in the early universe. And we'll be able to admire planets orbiting neighboring stars. Not bad for a new telescope, eh? Galileo would be proud. I chose this topic today because I know how we are sometimes overwhelmed by bad news. The economy, the pandemic, the war, and so many other things that occupy our minds and keep us distracted and stressed. Indeed, a lot of things can go wrong in this world, and we could live our entire lives worried, stressed, and unhappy. Of the poor results of all, as Walt Whitman said. But hey, when we look closely and we lift our eyes beyond our internal mental tempest, we can find that there are a lot of really cool things going on. And the news of the James Webb Telescope is one of them. It is a good reason to celebrate. It is a testament to human ingenuity, creativity, and endless thirst to learn. So let's give a cheer to all the engineers, scientists and administrators, to all the people that made the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope a success. Let's rejoice in their achievement and thank them for their effort to help humanity expand its knowledge. And let's wait for the pictures to come in. As Richard Feynman said, we can understand that this is a tremendous activity and a wild and exciting thing. I always feel a sense of awe when looking at the night sky. It puts our planet and our daily worries into perspective. And it fills me with a sense of wonder, reminding me how we are part of the universe, yet we have the conscious awareness to look back at it and ask questions. Surely we will never discover all the secrets. We may not come close to answering the more philosophical questions, such as why we are here or why the universe was created in the first place. But still, this telescope is a creation of the human mind, and it will allow us to take one more step, to look a little bit farther, to learn a little bit more, and we hope to become a little better in the process. This is worth celebrating. Most of the information shared in this video comes from open sources and from different news published about the subject. But mostly it comes from NASA. Their website is full of information and pictures. I will include a link in the description below. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click on the link to see some of my other videos where I talk about food, energy, chemistry, among other things. You may also want to see my video, Oh Me, Oh Life, reflections on a poem by Walt Whitman. And feel free to leave comments, press like, subscribe, whatever you want. And I'll see you next time.